Don't tell me about it I've had the way my life should be I just won't live my life And hope someday it's free Free from all that sadness Free from all that pain Free from you and everyone in my life's mine again And it's my freedom And it's mine to do as I choose It's my freedom Which I hope never to lose It's my freedom Lead me to my freedom And I'll lead your to yours Oh, freedom uh, I met Michael 20, 20 years ago. Right? Uh, we've got a drinking club. We used to go down to Ramsey Gardens. Right? Every six o'clock every morning, right? As you know, I'm an alcoholic. Right? <laughs> well, the big crew is, it was a big crew, is half of them are dead now, right? But we all used to uh, join up together. And then after that, every house I've had, I've, I've mixed with me, you know what I mean? <laughs> I the table here. I boys saying that uh, there's a busker doing more than that and listened to his music one night. I was out at the pubs and that, my brothers, and came across him basically busking away. Started uh, speaking to Mike and had to off right away. <laughs> I think I fucked that one up, didn't I? When I go to court on the 30th of May, I should get off with it because I never done it. It's like a, a CCTV, but the guy obviously looks a bit like me. I've seen the CCTV footage, but I wouldn't have been daft enough to, to screw a place or break into a place basically that had a CCTV camera. Uh, and genuinely, it's a mistake and then. Well, I first met Mike when he walked into the shop here in 2011, September 2011, desperate for some strings. Um, I hadn't heard him play. To me, he was just another busker. Chelsea hung herself. Three months before my mother was murdered, I actually found Mike's partner's mum, Marie, dead in her bed. I was, um, I was 18, 19, like just turned when my mother died. The guy that murdered my mum, William McLean, is in prison and I hope he stays there for the rest of his life. I first tried it um, in 2006 probably. Um, it was more just for fun really, more than anything else, it never developed into anything. I took it for the first little while without anybody knowing that I was using, but as these things do eventually it came out. Um, you can't have a relationship with a not an addict, and you can't have two, two addicts living together and trying to function normally together is just never ever going to work. You're just pulling each other down all the time. You can try and get help, you can try and help each other, but you'll never, you can't do it. I've seen the right side for the past four years, all through the night, all hours of the day if you know where you're going. Seven days a week, even Christmas. 
I don't have any support from the local authority at the moment other than my housing needs um, because nobody knows that I have this problem. Well, I went down to Mix the other night there and I got, because I've got a letter there saying that uh, seven days or everything's going out in the garden and what's happened is Mix bought me a van, Mick and Jokes bought me a van, which I couldn't afford. So you now oh, I'm getting all my stuff out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you know what, if it wasn't for getting this help, then everything that I'd ever built up my lifetime, like everything that belongs to my daughter, all the sentimental pictures in the wall, they would have all been flung out in the garden because I've, I've seen it, I've seen it happen to people up here. So I have, and I'm just grateful that this hasn't happened to me. I feel sorry for the folk it does. My young and crystal fountain. Surely find another 